Hallo zusammen. Some of you might have figured already, this is a new perspective and this is the new perspective because I've just moved into my new flat and this is the very first video out of this new studio room and just bumped against my microphone because everything is new, the situation is new. What's not so new anymore, actually, is the Rammstein song Dicke Titten. And today we're going to talk about it, what makes it interesting linguistically speaking and what is so special about the song's theme. So let's find out. Dicke Titten as Jill Lindemann kind of intonates it, is the ninth of 11 songs on the band's eighth album Zeit, which I've also reacted to as a first listen, full album reaction. You can find a link in the end card. Dicke Titten is one of the more jolly, not so overly dark and serious songs and a fitting contrast to a song like Angst, Fear, that seems to be about the fear of the unknown, foreigners and fear of being used as a tool of power by some and being frightened up to the point of irrationality. Of all 11 songs on this album, this song caught me off guard the most. I mean, I wasn't surprised that Rammstein would sing about a topic like this one, but it was released after the single Zeit, which is really philosophical and sophisticated and, you know, thought-provoking and... Memento Mori, Carpe Diem and all that stuff. It's a great, great song, one of Rammstein's most profound songs indeed. And then Dicke Titten came that sounds interesting. Then the song was released and the music video, I reacted to that by the way. That's a stark contrast. I mean, even the, the album is called Zeit. Die Zeit, the time, which also makes you think, which might make you nostalgic even, or, you know, remember certain good moments and bad moments in your lives. But Dicke Titten? Seriously? Seriously. Apparently. So, let's talk about it. Dicke Titten translates to thick tits for the inflected adjective dicke, dick, thick or big, and to the colloquial, vulgar, sometimes also negatively connotated noun die Titte, singular, die Titten, plural, the tit, yeah, not the bird though. And well, it is exactly what the title says. No double layering, no ambiguity this time. But this seemingly shallowness doesn't mean it's a bad song or less interesting in my opinion. First of all, the song begins with a typical Schlager arrangement with a recognizable melody and rhythm. Der Schlager. It's basically a form of peaceful bubblegum pop. Popular music, that is. Some Germans even think of it as stupefying music that numbs the mind. Music. Kind of. Gotta be honest with you guys, even though I'm not the biggest fan of this type of music, this sub-genre of popular music, like it or not, it is popular music at the end of the day. It reaches a huge part of the German population, even if they are drunk like 99% of the time when they listen to this, but it works. <laughs> I do like one or two things. For instance, Wolfgang Petri. I'm, I'm a, I have the stutter pack. <laughs> Maybe that also has to do with him having sort of a rock attitude to him when he makes that kind of Schlager pop rock mixture. In other words, yes, there is a cultural impact, a cultural reference inherent in this song because many Germans actually do listen to Schlager and Volksmusik. There's also a modern variation of this because, you know, modern pop music flavored with Schlager ingredients is quite popular with Helene Fischer and similar artists, for instance. So the first verse consists of eight lines and goes like this. Ich leb alleine schon viele Jahre. Das Leben stumpf, der Alltag grau. Verlier Geduld, Verstand und Haare. Ich hätte gerne eine Frau. Und die Hoffnung will mir schwinden, eine Partnerin zu finden, die mir ebenbürtig ist. Nein, da ist kein Glück in Sicht. What's interesting in context of the whole song is that up to this point, the lyrics may actually evoke a sense of das Mitleid or das Mitgefühl, compassion or sympathy for the lyrical eye. Even though the gender isn't truly revealed, I guess most people picture an older gray-haired man in his 50s or 60s who lives on his own but not as a happy single. At least that's what the song tells me. It's basically written as a sort of diary entry from the ego perspective, the first person perspective. Ich. I, if you will. Uh, ich will. Don't confuse those two. They sound similar, but they don't mean the same. You're welcome. 
What's even more intriguing in context of the entire lyrics is that up to this point, the lyrical eye would like to find a partner who's ebenbürtig, equal or on par to them. And without clarification, one could assume this refers to intellect, wit, emotions, skills or the like, usual things we compare each other to, you know? However, this rather rational approach sort of gets ridiculed in the chorus. Lines 1 and 3 feature an ellipsis with leb, usually being lebe, and verliere, usually being verliere. You may have noticed this in other songs as well. Till commonly shortens words, especially verbs like these, in order to fit the meter of the line. This once more shows how aware he seems to be of the rhythm and rhyme scheme as a lyricist and poet. What's also rather poetic is the altered word order, which is also common for many Rammstein songs. In standard German, the first line would be Ich lebe schon viele Jahre alleine, whereas in this song it's Ich lebe allein schon viele Jahre. And in this instance, it also makes sense because, you know, then the rhyme scheme works out with Haare in line 3. Line 2 is an elliptic structure. This once again helps to keep a steady flow going. Line 5 is easily comprehensible for Germans, yet it's not the way we'd paraphrase this. Und die Hoffnung will mir schwinden. However, Till's wording is really cool because it underlines die Hilflosigkeit, the helplessness. Because it underlines that it's not the lyrical I who is in charge, but it's, you know, the hope that goes away and they don't have control over the hope and they can't help themselves. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Little details like this one, for instance, is what separates Till Lindemann as a lyricist from many of his peers. Not to say that they are bad, but it truly makes a difference because, I mean, you can have the most clever topic that you want to sing about or make a song about, but if you're unable to express yourself in a interesting linguistic fashion, you know, outstanding words that might not be like of daily use or expressions that really make you think and, you know, oh, that's ambiguous, what does that mean? Oh, it could also mean this. Stuff like that is what Till Lindemann really excels in. He has a sort of linguistic feel for what the song needs and which choice of words, which expressions, phrases, phrasings as well, work best and make the song most interesting. The chorus goes like this. Sie muss nicht schön sein. Sie muss nicht klug sein. Nein. Sie muss nicht reich sein. Kein Modell mit langen Schlitten. Doch dicke Titten. You could argue that the lyrical eye seems to be someone who doesn't need to have a partner that has to have an exaggerated amount of specific traits or skills. And maybe in a way that could actually be seen as something positive. I guess there are some people out there looking for a partner with a highly unrealistic and highly perfectionistic character, or <laughs> whatever it is, looks almost godlike expectations and therefore unrealistic. But as the end of the chorus tells us, the lyrical eye only and only cares about thick tits and it's the only relevant value in their partner. I like how Till came up with an extremely ridiculous second to last line, but it of course adds to the ridiculousness and shallowness of the situation portrayed here. I could be wrong, but to me, lange Schlitten is meant as a euphemism, a colloquial way to refer to a woman's long legs for lang, long, and der Schlitten. Singular, die Schlitten, plural, the sledge. One very important linguistic detail you guys should keep in mind when learning German is, yes, the German equivalent of the English auxiliary verb to must is müssen. However, the specific negating expression must not does not equal nicht müssen in German, even though you may expect that. The English must not equals the German nicht dürfen, not to be allowed to do something for dürfen, to be allowed to, and nicht, not. This also applies vice versa. The German nicht müssen equals the English does not have to. Hence my translation here. The more you know with German with Vlogdave. You're welcome. The second verse goes like this. Wie eine stetig offene Wunde. Aus der Seele tropft das Blut. Einzig Trost sind kleine Hunde. Ein feines Fräulein. Wäre gut. Ein feines Fräulein wäre toll. Ich bin auch gar nicht anspruchsvoll. Ich bin auch gar nicht wählerisch. Am Ende der Geschichte. Till actually talks about little dogs. 
I thought we were talking titties. Now we're talking doggies. But they are both connected, actually. I mean, it's it's not big boobed doggies, but in German, the plural form of the noun der Mops, singular, die Möpse, plural, can mean both a pug, meaning a dog breed, which is uh, kind of cute, but in colloquial or slang German, it can also mean tits. That's why Till mentions little dogs, implying Möpse, implying them titties. Once more, being the only source of relief, comfort, good feelings, happiness for the lyrical eye, you name it. Also, the term Fräulein, here even as an alliteration, feines Fräulein, fine miss, also underlines the lyrical eye's age and gender. It's an old-fashioned, outdated term anyway, and pretty much no German would use it anymore, anyway. In addition, using old terms like this one, every now and then, makes the lyrics even more outstanding and interesting, since it's something different, almost poetic and unexpected. The second four lines once again underline how aware the lyrical eye seems to be about their situation. The second chorus features slight changes compared to the first one. Muss sie nicht schön sein? Sie muss nicht klug sein? Nein. Sie muss nicht reich sein? Doch um eines möchte ich bitten. Dicke Titten. The first line can be seen as a continuation of the verse's last line, hence the changed, almost question-like word order. And in fact, taken on its own, it could actually be interpreted as such. Muss sie nicht schön sein? Doesn't she have to be beautiful? You know, maybe I should add another factor in this, and not just, you know, them titties, but the overall appearance and the looks of a person, almost as if the lyrical eye does have a tiny little bit of doubt left in there, if there may be other things they also care about other than the boobies. However, the second to last line quickly leads back to the boobs being the only interest the lyrical eye seems to have. The next two lines are pretty much a bridge-like section and follow the lines, so to speak. Ich bin auch gar nicht anspruchsvoll, doch große Brüste wären toll. The lyrical eye does have such a strong urge, as we can see and hear in the song. It makes me think, you know, maybe because that is the case, the lyrical eye actually is quite demanding. The final chorus is longer and sort of another climax at the song's ending, also underlined by the more steady bass drum pattern. Sie muss nicht schön sein. Sie muss nicht klug sein. Sie muss nur reich sein. An Fettgewebe. Bitte, bitte. Sie wird nichts bei mir vermissen. Sie braucht mich auch gar nicht küssen. Braucht mich nicht mit Trauben laben. Sie muss nur Riesentitten haben. Instead of the actual ending, the chorus continues and basically ends the way everything has begun, with the exception of the wording. Riesentitten. Could either be expressed as two separate words, with a prefixoid Riesen, meaning it being used like an increasing prefix, extremely huge or gigantic, <laughs> and Titten. But it would be more common to just say Riesige Titten, huge or gigantic tits, for Riesige being the accusative plural positive of the adjective Riesig, huge or gigantic. Using a different wording here increases the strength of the lyrical eye's urge to get what they want. In other words, it underlines their high level of desperation. Die Verzweiflung. Cool song, definitely, and it has got more to it than meets the eye. I hope you enjoyed the song, I hope you enjoyed this video as well. If you did, you know what to do, the usual YouTube stuff. I keep repeating it, and many YouTubers do, and creators. But we do it because it is so important. If you want to help your favorite creator out, do it by liking, by sharing the video, by commenting. It really helps a lot. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Vielen lieben Dank for doing that. It's greatly appreciated from the bottom of my German heart, which you're actually able to see sort of with this new perspective. Hooray for Boobies, which is a Bloodhound Gang album title, but it also fits the context. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm your vlog, Dave. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.